today about winter sewing. This is something that Bill and I have never done before, but since we're both be retired as of the beginning of November, we want to see how well can we grow vegetables in our greenhouse in the winter. This can also be done outside under high tunnels. In fact, it usually is done outside under high tunnels for large plants, low tunnels, or in cold frames. But we're going to do it here. This is an under the bed box. Uh, you can see it here if you want to zoom in but I did drill holes all around the outside here all the way around I like to do them on the outside rather than the bottom because when you set it on top of something the water can pool underneath but anyway and I'm just using the lid as a drain area I'm starting with some basic potting soil I'll explain the PVC pipe in a second after I make a bunch of noise Okay, it's your basic potting soil, complete with pot, which we don't need. And I'm just going to put, a, you know, this is going to be um, all greens, kale, spinach. I'm going to try turnips, it's a little late. This is the um, winter harvesting chart that I referred to in another post, and I'll put the links down there in the description or the comments section. The uh, idea of the PVC pipe is something I learned from my dad, who primarily grows non-edibles. And it's a way to water from above, but the water comes up from below. So I will show you, but you pour the water, let me get it in an even spot, pour the water into the pipe and it comes up underneath the seeds and therefore not disturbing the seeds. Let's put the biggest one in the middle, just because we can. Okay, there we go, nice and even. What I've got next is um, some stuff I made for a terrarium. It's a mixture of potting soil and a lot of sphagnum moss. You can see in this one especially, um, this is probably primarily sphagnum moss. It might be entirely sphagnum moss. Sphagnum moss helps hold in the moisture. I don't, I'd have to look it up. Peat moss it's also known as. I like to use it in just about everything. It just seems that anytime you have peat moss in your soil, especially in containers, it, they just seem to do so much better than one without. I've never done a side-by-side, -side, but it just seems healthier. <laughs> they did, did real well in the, the terrarium. I shouldn't call it a terrarium because it doesn't have any growing plants in it. It actually has two hermit crabs and some fake ivy, and it was really for my job, but I ended up inheriting it. I'll take care of that later. There we go. Use your head. I did actually start this project yesterday where I accidentally uncovered uh, a, in act, an active wasp nest. So I'm just going to get rid of all this peat moss because I have it here and I want to use it all up. And then finally, I'm going to add some seed starting mix. Um, I don't necessarily recommend any particular brand. This happened to be what I was able to purchase. It is the off season, so I had to go online to order it because none of our local farm and gardens really have much of anything left. But I also wanted it for this coming spring of 22 because the way things are, um, in this country right now, with COVID and all the different things every day, it seems like there's something new. But with everything going on, I wanted some seed starting mix so I know that I have the seeds that I need. Last spring, it was difficult to even get some seeds, so I know that I have what I need, including the seed starting mix. <laughs> I know this is not real exciting, but here's what we're going to grow. We're going to start, I got all Johnny seeds because they were the ones that put out the chart, so I thought, you know, I'm, I'll follow them. We're going to try some kale. It's, um, this is called winter boar 
so it's actually made for winter growing. Just going to sprinkle a little bit here. This is probably what we would use the most of, so I'm going to go all the way around the pipe there and, you know, do what works for you, but this is how I plant kale. <laughs> I don't go a certain amount deep. I. Sorry for that little interruption. Apparently, I picked up a whole bunch of little tiny ants in my shoes. <laughs> Ow. And um, they were biting me, so we had to take care of that. So, um, the next thing we're going to do is spinach. And again, this will be something that will probably be used more than anything else. So, I'm going to spread them in between here. And, you know, you can thin out the baby spinach and eat them, of course. Um, we're getting more than we want here. Probably don't need that many here. Never waste the seed. And then we have a number of Asian greens. I also have some turnips. And all this is tatsoi, or ko koji, I'm sorry. I go alphabetically that way, since I'm not writing it down, obviously. As you can see, <laughs> I will be able to remember. So it's kale, spinach, and alphabetical three rolls of Asian greens. So this one's called Koji. And greens like lettuce are very much like uh, flower seeds in that they need light to germinate. Most vegetables, tomatoes, peppers, etc., do not need light to germinate. So we're just going to put them in and very lightly, like I did with the kale, very lightly cover them up. Practically not at all. This one got damp somewhere. This is Tatsoi, which I have grown before. And not only is it delicious, it is gorgeous. It's an absolute, it makes, if you're into um, nature photography, you should grow some Tatsoi because it is just that pretty. It grows like, spreads out. <laughs> it's just, I have a, somewhere I have a really nice picture of Tatsoi. And this one is called Green 70D Improved. And this is actually in the Brassica family, but it is considered an Asian green. Maybe all the Asian greens are in the Brassica family. I have to go look that up. We don't necessarily eat greens, but we don't grow them, and it's kind of a shame. Yeah, we grow the stuff more that we can can, like tomatoes and peppers and onions and things like that, or that we can feed to the chickens. So that's everything there. Um, I am going to do another under the bed box here, and I will try the turnips in there and anything else there's still time for. And you can cover this with another under the box, under the bed box lid to create a little bit of a greenhouse environment more so than the greenhouse it's actually in. But I'll show you the watering, and I probably will spritz, it, spritz this also. So if you can get this spill, if I can do it without spilling it. Normally I would hold on to it. There we go. And if you can see there, Bell, can you get in close? You can see the water pushing the soil up from below as it spreads out underneath. Now since this is the first time, I think I will also do a little watering from above. But after that, I expect to be primarily watering it this way especially once the roots set in. That's how my dad does all of his flowers. You can also just use a spritzer bottle, whatever, you know, whatever you like. So we'll get a little bit of this going in here. And I'm gonna put a lid on it so that that moisture will stay in there and it will get humid and they'll sprout hopefully sooner. I don't know what they say in the seeds it doesn't look like it says how long it will be to come up, but usually, you know, a couple weeks, within two weeks. I have noticed that here in the greenhouse, everything seems to sprout faster and grow faster. And I think I still have some baby ants in here, that I, <laughs> little tiny ants that are taking little tiny bites out of me. So I'm going to say goodbye for now, and we'll keep you up to date on how we do with our under the bed box winter garden. And there's a bee trying to attack the camera. <laughs>